And this is why the left has redefined racism to mean not discrimination on the basis of race, but something utterly indefinable. If everything boils down to power, well, then everything becomes a power game. Principle is of no consequence because principles are all lies. And this is why the left has redefined racism to mean not discrimination on the basis of race, but something utterly indefinable. Right? Ibn Rex Kendi, who is the greatest race grifter of our time, he put it this way. This is how he defines racism. You ready for this? Here we go. Quote, a marriage of racist policies and racist ideas that produces and normalizes racial inequities. Now, this is what we call a circular definition, right? I mean, if, if, I, if I say to you, I want you to define the word chair, and you say that a chair is a chair that is made through the principles of charitum, I have not offered you any sort of definition of the word chair at all. But this is exactly what he just did with racism, right? Racism is a marriage of racist policies and racist ideas that produces and normalizes racial inequities. So what does he actually mean by this? Well, what he actually means by this, and he's pretty clear about this, is that any disparity in American life between black and white has to be chalked up to discrimination. This also means that only the less powerful can be discriminated against. Now, you've heard this from leftist professors. They will say that racism isn't actually discrimination against somebody on the basis of race. It's discrimination combined with power. That's a deconstructionist idea because only the powerful are capable of true discrimination. So, for example, if a black person beats up an Asian person on a subway station in New York, then this is not worthy of national news coverage in any way because after all, black people are by and large victims in American society. And even if Asian people are sort of victims in American society, they do do really well on the SATs. So that means... <laughs> so that means that this can't actually be a racist act. Right? You see this in the way that the left treats anti-Semitism. When a white supremacist goes and shoots up a synagogue, that's white supremacy and racism and evil. When a black Hebrew Israelite tries to shoot up a synagogue, then that's just a local news story. It's just something weird that happened and we can't really explain it. It's not racism or anti-Semitism in any way. Because in the intersectional hierarchy of power, it's the power status that matters. Everything is shaped around the power status. Well, Abraham X. Kenny, by the way, he goes all the way. He actually suggests that there ought to be a federal department of anti-racism, not elected, and it should be given the power. I'm, I'm not kidding. He wrote a piece about this for Politico. He suggests that this federal department of anti-racism should be able to strike down any state, local, or federal law that ends in racial inequality. Okay, that, that's all laws, by the way. That is, because there is not a single law that, that applies equally across all racial groups. It just doesn't work that way because, again, not all racial, to take a simple example, there's a big age difference between racial groups in the United States. Black Americans are significantly younger on average than white Americans are. This is one of the reasons you see an income, well, wealth gap between white Americans and black. Not the only reason, there are many reasons, but this is one reason. Because as people get older, they tend to accrue wealth. So what this means is that any law is going to strike different groups differentially because not all groups are similarly situated. And that's not always because of discrimination. Sometimes that's just the reality on the ground. Nobody ever suggests that it's discrimination, that there aren't a bunch of Jews in the NBA. There are reasons for that. Jews are, on average, not the tallest of folks. And yes, I'm still 5'9". Okay. 